Do you think I hide cigarettes in my room, Doctor? No. Where do I hide them, Doctor? On the shelves behind the books? Cigarettes and medicated sherry and books my mother won't allow me to read? A whole secret life hidden up here behind a locked door? Please. It was only the box that reminded me. How very perceiving you are, Doctor. How very right you are. And see, I was just about to hide this album. You know, you really should read it. It's a shame for you to come all the way up here and miss your amusement. Read it, Doctor. The Intimate Journal of Miss Charlotte Dale Spinster. Well, anything convince you that I don't wish to pry? Oh, but you must pry. I insist that you do. There's really nothing to frighten you off. A, a few snapshots, a memento or two. It's a record of my last trip abroad with my mother. We were sailing up the coast of Africa. See, there's a picture of our ship, a P&O steamer. You wouldn't have known me then. I was 20 then. Oh, I say. That was a scorcher. Leslie, you act so funny. Do I? I thought that men didn't like girls who were prudes. Oh, you're gorgeous, Charlotte. Come on, give us another. No oh, eyes open. There's the first maid. Be looking for me. There's always a mess of work just before we dock. Are you going ashore tonight? Are we, Pat? Darling, if I can't go, you won't, will you? Not even if that girl from New York does. <laughs> Not likely. There's nothing like you to be found in all of Africa. There he is again. I'd better hop to it. Leslie. Yes? Come here. Dearest, darling. I had read that part in novels about men not liking girls to be prudes. That's all I had to go by, novels. Leslie told me he'd rather have me than any girl on board or any girl he'd ever known because I was so responsive. He said that the others were like silly schoolgirls compared to my lovemaking. Why aren't you wearing your glasses? Oh, they're in my bag. Mother, they're so unattractive. Other girls... Put them on. You'll never get another pair of eyes, my dear. What's that book? Marconi. Wireless. I'm studying it. From whom are you learning about wireless? Mr. Trotter lent me the book. You mean the wireless officer? Yes. Mother, are we taking the short trip tonight? No, Charlotte, I think not. Then could I go alone? Oh, I don't mean really alone. I ran to the ship's hostess, and she said they were organizing groups, and I said I'd ask you. Could we try to remember that we're hardly commercial travelers? Bad enough to have to associate with these tourists on board without having to go ashore with them. You have all the vigor of the typical American tourist. Charlotte, sit down and uh, write something to someone. For the last three days, you've been behaving like an excited servant girl. That night, I left her in her room with one of her headaches. I would go to the library and read. And later, when she looked for me, I wasn't there. She couldn't know I was with Leslie. But she knew I hadn't gone ashore. She checked on that. Leslie and I always had to be discreet. Not only because of Mother, but because of his position on the ship as well. One of our favorite trysting places was on the freight deck, among the crates and canvas-covered automobiles. It was a particular limousine. Come out at once. Trotter. I don't care. I'm glad. Go to your cabin. I want to marry your daughter. We're engaged to be married. You allow what you call your officers to address a passenger in that manner? You'll report to my quarters at once, Trotter. Go to your cabin. I had said I was glad. And I was glad. He had defied my mother and placed me on a throne. And before a witness, too. It was the proudest moment of my life. My moment didn't last long, as you can see. 
My mother didn't think that Leslie was suitable for a veil of Boston. What man is suitable, Doctor? She's never found one. What man would ever look at me and say, I want you? I'm fat. My mother doesn't approve of dieting. Look at my shoes. My mother approves of sensible shoes. Look at the books on my shelves. My mother approves of good, solid books. I am my mother's well-loved daughter. I am her companion. I am my mother's servant. My mother says, my mother, my mother, my mother! <laughs> Get another pair of eyes, as your mother says, if you spoil them with tears. <laughs> Dr. Jacquist, can you help me? Help you? When you were talking downstairs, when you were talking about the fork in the road, there are other forks further along the road. So many. <laughs> you don't need my help. Here your glasses. Put away your book and come downstairs. I'll go ahead. Thank you again for this. <laughs>